What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Launch Network. This is Carmen Danisco, your co-co-host for today's show of Reality Is. We've got an awesome show today. I don't even know what the hell is going to happen. You guys remember, take the kids out of the room. We got Mark Portney on. We got his cohort, Brian Scanlon. We got some crazy stuff going to happen, but I'm sure in the end, we'll be good. Let's bring him on. Mark, what's happening? Brian, what's going on? Hey, Carmine. What's up, man? What's up, Carmine? How's it going? Doing good, man. Just waking up, grabbing some coffee, coming out of the bunker, ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) You're still stuck in the bunker? (laughs) No, man. I've been, it's great because I've been coming to my office because everyone else is home. So I get to come here, get away from everybody. That's awesome, dude. So, why don't we? Why don't we just jump right the fuck into it? I mean, uh, why, why are we bullshitting around about the office and coming in? The goddamn <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, man. I love entrepreneurs. I love entrepreneurship. You know that. Everybody who listens to this podcast knows that I love entrepreneurs. And I don't usually do this, and I usually don't get behind anything. But this is an opportunity that I just couldn't say no to. And uh, Brian knows exactly what I'm talking about. This opportunity is for anyone that just wants to bust their ass a little bit. I never want to hear from anyone that they can't make a living ever again. Because this opportunity, and I've got an incredible co-founder that's going to come on and talk about knowing his stuff. He forgot more about this than I'll ever know. But the guy does very, very well. He's uh, very wealthy. And you can be wealthy too. And it doesn't cost the entrepreneur a fucking penny. Okay. I'm not going to ruin it. I mean, when he comes on, he'll give you all the information. Um, The last thing I'm going to disclose, because the name of this podcast is Reality Is, I am already doing this. I have been doing this for, for a whole bunch of months. I'm making an absolute fucking fortune. So you can take that shit to the bank. So I'm not, I'm actually practicing what I preach. But Brian, how many deals a week would you say that, that we take a look at you know, conservatively? I mean, from an investment perspective, probably 20 to 30, maybe, maybe closer to 30, 40. So Carmine, 20 to 30 deals a week. And I say no to 99% of them because they're just, it's just too much. It's just some of them don't make sense. Anybody out there that invests, they understand what I'm talking about. When Brian brought this to me, because Brian was the one that found it, give credit where credit is due. And he brought it to me. And I was like, Brian, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. It was one of my fortune cookie, uh, you know, my, one of my fortune cookie moments that I gave to Brian. He was like, dude, I'm telling you something right now. This is not only real. We can make a lot of money. I said, I'm from Missouri. Show me. I'm from the show me state. Right. So guess what? About eight, what is it? Eight months now? Six months? Well, yeah, about, about eight, seven or eight months. Yeah. Seven or eight months ago, we started. And you've been keeping this a something. secret for this long? Fuck you. Bro. Oh, come on. So, <laughs> listen, come on. I'm, I'm building this the fuck up. <laughs> Calm down, man. So, anyway, to make, to make a long story short, but Chris, is, Chris uh, Benabu, who's the co founder of uh, Swipe for Free, uh, why don't we get him on, and then uh, and then we can get this started. I'll ask him some questions, uh, some simple questions, and then he'll get into it and show everybody, and I mean everybody with an E, how to make a ton of money. I never want to hear anybody crying like a bitch ever again after you guys meet Chris Benabu. So mm-hmm. why don't you get him on, Carmine? Hey, Chris, what's up, man? Hey, gentlemen, how are you? Hey, Carmine, Doing Brian, good. Mark. What's up, Brian, Chris? What's, uh, Chris, what's happening, man? Good, good. Uh, you know, doing doing good considering the, what's going on. But uh, so Chris is, uh, Chris is um, the co-founder of a company called Swipe for Free. And that's swipe, the number four, free.com. And you can go on there and we'll get into exactly how everybody can get started once Chris goes into it. But I mean, Chris, just for a second. I mean, basically, I came from nothing. I'm a sea slug. And uh, I... I understand that you have a similar upbringing. Where were you born? Like, what, what's your deal? Are you a New York guy? What's going on? Yep, I'm a, I'm a uh, New Yorker. I was born in Brooklyn uh, in a neighborhood uh, called Canarsie. Um, you know, modest uh, upbringing. Uh, I thought we were middle class because I was able to get a pair of sneakers once a year. But I realized later on in life that we were uh, pretty uh, pretty poor. But uh, grew up grew up in Brooklyn. Um, 
early on, it's just like, I, I mean, I saw your story, Mark, could, whatever I could sell, I sold, you know what I mean? If it was, uh, if anybody's my age group in here, Jan Sports strings where you used to tie them to your book bag. Yeah. First, first real hustle selling Jan Sports strings. I figured out you could pull out the middles and I sold the insides. All right. I drew things, sold them to my relatives. Um, we could go on and on. My mom says she saw it uh, early on, you know, so, very, very so early you, on. Um, so you started off uh, from meager beginnings and then right. you, in the middle somewhere, you, you, got, you got your hustle on and then you started to do really, really well, right? Yep. I mean, uh, uh, again, I always say this. Uh, if you want an overnight success, get rich, it's not going to happen. Uh, it took, took a little time. I started pretty young. You know, it's, I'm, I'm 38. So been hustling for about 20 years now. So, so uh, yeah. I'm an overnight success. It just took me 20 years. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. so, you, so you, you, I mean, you've been through the mill, right? So you, uh, you built I've, it I've up. I've been through it all. You were, yeah. And uh, you got apartments foreclosed on. You got all that shit. Right? I didn't know we were going to go that deep. But uh, yeah, I've, but, I've made, uh, <laughs> I made my mistakes. I thought, uh, let's put it like this. Uh, I started my with my partners, my first uh, retail cellular phone store, what I call in the golden ages, right after the beeper, you know, uh, was dying out. Uh, I took a booth, which was not even a cell phone store, which was inside of a sneaker store in a, in a very uh, famous neighborhood in downtown Brooklyn. Um, and I grew that with my partners to 21 large Fifth Avenue, 14th Street, Manhattan type locations. Uh, so I honestly, I thought I was, uh, I was rich at the time. I was a young kid. Uh, I started buying things at the time, uh, you know, with 10% down, hey, buy a $2 million apartment. And I made my mistakes and uh, I'm grateful actually, I made them younger because I was able to learn and, and, and climb out. But yes, uh, my life was uh, pretty typical. I went like this, uh, financial crisis went like this, and then I could get into how did I exit retail and get into credit card processing, which was the greatest decision I ever made in my whole life. Okay, so credit card processing. When Brian first brought it to me and he said those words, credit card processing, I was like, Brian, do me a favor, get the fuck away from me with yeah, this he, shit because he told it's me a to dog's, turn around and get out of the room. It's no, a no dog's joke. Game. It's a dog's game. So now that we now that we're up to today, so you're a very wealthy guy, you're in good shape, you and your partners are doing very, very well to say the least. Let's not get crazy. But, I'm humble, uh, but yes, uh, right, we're doing humble, good. and uh, the helicopter will be picking you up in about 45 minutes. So yeah, <laughs> nice and humble. But um, but the rea the reality is that um, we brought you up to today. Now, please, in as simple form as you can, ex display explain the opportunity and that it's not normal credit card processing. Yes, you got it. So yeah, typically what 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 I started what we started 13 years ago was. You know, typical credit card processing. We, you know, we come into your business or we cold call your business. We take your credit card processing statement and we do the whole, oh, we're going to cut your fees, right? We're going to eliminate your processing fees. I'm sorry, uh, we're going to lower your processing fees. So guys, I, before I get into that, and I always, I always jump the gun thinking everybody understands what the hell is credit card processing, right? Credit card processing is we provide the merchant with the ability to accept credit cards. You know, the terminals, POS systems, all the good stuff, the swipers. Okay, we give the business the opportunity to accept cards. Now, what do we do? We charge the business uh, rates to accept those credit cards. All right, those rates are determined by the credit card companies. And then we obviously upsell those rates and we make the difference. So I wanna make this clear as a consumer listening to this. If you're a consumer and you're shopping at your local businesses or wherever, and you have these fancy rewards points and airline miles and all that good stuff, the credit card company, so your Capital One Venture Card or your Chase Sapphire is not the ones giving you your rewards. The merchant that you shop in is paying a rate of close to 3%, sometimes more, a lot more, sometimes a little bit less, to accept that card to then give you those rewards. So the credit card companies are geniuses. They charge the merchant to accept those cards to pass the rewards on to you as the consumer to use them. All right, so that's how credit card processing works. We charge the merchant fees and rates, right? So if you batch a grand, just using a simple example, if you were to process in your pizzeria today, God bless a grand, when you wake up in the morning, when you batch, you actually don't receive a grand, you receive $997. Say your, your effective rate is 3%. So you're getting the minus your fees deposited to your account. So 
for those of you consumers, not only do the credit card companies make money on interest, late payments, all that good stuff, they make money right at the time that you purchase anything because they charge the merchant. And there's room for them to profit other than your rewards. Trust me, they're very, very smart people, okay? So what's this, what's this opportunity specific? What can the people out there, where, where can they start to make good, good money on a monthly basis? So Mark, you hit really well when you said, oh really, credit card processing, get the fuck out of here. To be completely honest, uh, about four and a half years ago, um, you know, that's where we were uh, in, in this business. We were getting tired of the rates, basically uh, like any other competitive business, everybody and their grandmother started running around selling credit card processing. It's not the hardest thing in the world to uh, walk into a business, grab their bill, send it over to my company, do an analysis, and then come back with some savings. The problem is, uh, through competition, the profits and the savings became, you know, ultimately there was no money to be made. There was this much room to make. So at that time I said, Hey, it's either I follow uh, other companies, uh, methods, which I didn't want to, you know, uh, which was to teach people how to lie. All right. How do I give them low rates like bank of America loves to do. And then a year later, uh, raise the rates because we assume people are not looking anymore, which is not right. Uh, and I decided at that point, I didn't want to continue to, uh, to teach. I'm in charge of sales. So I didn't want to teach those sales uh, tactics. So, uh, combination, I, I believe in luck guys, uh, hard work is number one. I have to tell you the truth. Uh, I haven't had an easy day yet. Look at the grays. Um, but, uh, luck, uh, luck also came about. So, uh, Mark, I don't know if you want to get me into a funny story, but, uh, Good. how I even, so again, luck also the realization earlier on than other companies, right? Other companies were still figuring out, Oh, what are we going to do? Actually, they were just adapting to the sadness. I'll be honest with you. They were just saying, Hey, uh, this, it is what it is. Our guys are going to lie. They're going to raise rates on people. They're going to change rates. They're going to push people in what they call ETFs, early termination fees, right? All this crap. And I said, no, at that time, started researching, uh, got a little lucky uh, again, went to dinner, met, the uh, was next to some women celebrating and drinking. Uh, at the time, three years ago, I was a lot thinner. So they said, Hey, handsome, what do you do? I was doing one of those communal tables in a nice restaurant in New York City. And uh, I said, I, I own a credit card proxy company. And they're like, oh, wow, uh, have a drink. We're celebrating our Airbnb type of business. They rented uh, vacation properties. And they said, hey, uh, wow, you do credit card processing. Our, our really good friend, is, he's making a shitload of money doing that. And I love how he eliminates our processing fees. Wow. And I said, whoa, what do you mean he eliminates? How can you eliminate? He has to charge you. She said, what do you mean? We pass the fees on to the consumer. I said, holy shit. Honestly, I keep on drinking. The minute Monday morning came, I called my attorney. My attorney, I can't say the name, who's famous in the industry, in my industry, said, I've never heard of this, but let me look into it. And she came back and said, holy shit. Uh, the Durban Amendment in 2010 allows you to pass the fees onto the consumer, okay? It's called cash discounting. Very simple. Same way you go to a gas station, gentlemen, you pay a cash price, which is lower than a credit or debit card price, right? Per gallon price is, is less. Same concept, but we were able to bring that to all merchants, to all merchants. Amazing, it's amazing. So let's, so let's simplify, let's simplify. I walk into I walk into a uh, rest a pizzeria, right? So, mm -hmm. ten bucks, right? I have uh, two slices of pizza and a coke, ten bucks, whatever the fuck it is. What happens? I don't pay cash. I give them my credit card. What what happens? Exactly. So pretty much all the prices in the pizzeria are cash prices, right? Slice of pizza, who knows what it is now in New York City, two fifty, whatever it is. Okay, that's the cash price. If you opt or choose to pay with a credit or debit card at the time of the sale, you pull it out and uh, the, that owner types in that $10 sale into that terminal, okay, there will be a 4% non-cash charge, separate line item added to that transaction. So it's gonna say 10 bucks, non-cash charge, you're not paying cash. If you paid cash, it would be 10. You're paying credit or debit, that non-cash charge will pop up, 4%, 40 cents, you're going to pay a total of 1040 as the consumer. Now, so now let, let's, flip, let's, flip the, let's flip the script, right? 
I'm mm -hmm. the pizza guy. So now I used to swipe 10 bucks and the credit card company would give me back 970 in the morning, right? So now, exactly. because Mr. Consumer used his credit card and now he's paying $10.40, now I get the whole $10 as Mr. Pizza, right? You hit it on the nose. Yeah. Okay. That, I'm so, sorry. so my brother-in-law owns a pizzeria. I go in and I go, hey, Joey, listen, uh, I got this great program and I'm gonna, I need to sign you up and you're going to pass the thing on to the consumer, right? And I, and I got... 10 relatives. I got 10 fucking people in my family. One guy owns a car dealership. The other guy owns a car repair place. My other brother, he owns fucking pizzeria and I get them all going, right? How do I make fucking money? Let's get to what's important. How do I make fucking money? Yeah. So that's the beauty of the business. Um, if you sign up a merchant, okay. And again, it's really, of course, it can get more complicated in the bigger the business, but the simplicity of it is, Mark, you hit it on the nose. You know, you have a cousin, he owns a pizzeria, your other buddy owns a deli, your other guy owns this. You simply provide these services to eliminate their credit card processing fees. Now, we make a residualized income on that account. So it's not a one-time commission. Okay, guys, I learned a long time ago, I don't work anymore for one-time payouts. I don't care how big they are. If you were to tell me, here's a, a hundred grand, I, I'd rather pay you over 24 months and then you'll make a hundred grand for another 48 months, I'm taking the broken down payment. Guys, it's residualized income. You sign up your cousin's pizzeria, you get paid monthly, okay? Now, obviously, there's different programs based on your commitment level. Uh, as a ISO, what, what in our industry is called, an independent sales organization, that's industry talk. Um, there are different programs where you would fall into those uh, different percentages of uh, profit sharing. So it's a profit sharing program, uh, residualized paid out monthly, 1099. That's how it works. It's a residualized income, gentlemen. So I'm getting paid on the gross credit card revenue of every single person. So I could be doing 100000 a month. I could be doing 500000 a month in transactions, correct? Yeah, so it's, it's almost to the saying, uh, you know, you're making money while you sleep. At the end of the day, if you were to sign up a business that works in the nights and the weekends, you're making money as long as that business is, is accepting credit and debit. And let's face it, uh, other than, uh, I always throw this joke in New York, there's these famous pizzerias that only accept cash, the two, or two of them that are left. Everybody else is your uh, potential customer because everybody accepts uh, credit and, and debit. Uh, and let's face it, um, throughout the years, uh, without having to bring up you know, COVID, but before this, uh, cash was already becoming obsolete. Now you add in the cherry on top, which is cash is honestly, we all seem blow in all these movies. It's dirty, right? It has res, you know, residue on it. Nobody wants to accept cash. Now let's get deeper. Nobody's even going to want to eventually take credit card. They're going to want to tap and go or use uh, Apple Pay or Android Pay, which we have the terminal uh, and the POS equipment that accepts that. That's the future of, of accepting payments. So basically, if I just want to start this business, which I did already, you, you, mm -hmm. I have a very, very deep Rolodex. So it works for me. I can start calling people in my Rolodex. And of course, I'm going to call in on all my contacts. But a regular person, number one, you look inside. You've got your cousins, your brothers, your uncles, and, and, exactly. and, and family friends, and the business acquaintances. And, and you start right there. That's how you start the income stream. Then once they get their feet under them, then they can go and, and, uh, and kind of uh, put more rings around the bullseye, so to speak, and pull in more and more accounts. And, and I just want to know, I know we're talking about pizzerias and stuff, but is there a company that's too small for this? And is there a company that's too big for this? Like, wh wh what's the sweet spot here? Where, where can I make the most money? Well... The, 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 the simple part is, and the beauty of this, of this industry or this program especially, is A, it's nationwide. So guys, if you're listening anywhere in the United States of America, you can sell this program, okay? That's number one. Uh, number two, um, uh, it doesn't matter how big or small the business is. I have car dealerships that process you know, tens of millions of dollars a year. Uh, Think about it uh, as simple as when you go do service, as when you go to buy a car, when you go, you know, uh, fix anything. Uh, and then I have, uh, which in a, in a way, thank God, because right now my delis 
and groceries and bodegas and supermarkets are obviously the only business right now that are doing well. So the reality is, is um, some guys come to me and they have a friend there. And again, it's really like you said, Mark, it's contacts. You can be lucky enough to have a guy you went to college with that's uh, the CEO of uh, Reebok and he runs all the, uh, the, the retail locations and you could go pitch him. Or it can be as simple as you go to the deli that you've been shopping at for 15 years because you grew up down the block and you tell the owner, hey, I can eliminate all your credit card and debit card processing fees. So it's not like only the big boys can do this or only the regular people can do this. Anybody can solicit any merchant size. We deal with franchises, gentlemen, as long as obviously the franchise agreement doesn't force them to process with them. We could get into that later. Very smart uh, gas stations uh, only force you to process with them. Sunoco won't let you go anywhere else. They want that money. They want to deduct that gas balance from the credit card processing. But anyway, any merchant can be our merchant. That's pretty yeah, much how it works. Guess Gas stations have been doing this for 10 years. When you go to the pump, you go to the pump, it's 325 for cash and 335 for, for credit. And that's and that's acceptable for everyone. I mean, so this is this to me was a no-brainer. Absolutely a no-brainer. Once I got over the first word, which was credit card processing, because this is a completely different deal. This isn't fighting for a tenth of a fucking point. This is yep. actually saving. And if you don't think how many restaurants and businesses are going to be on the balls of their ass from this COVID. I mean, you, yep. we can say it. It is what it is here, Chris. We just, on this podcast, we just talk, we say what it is like nobody's listening, which is fine. But, but the, there's so many, so many, number one, businesses that are going to be on the balls of their ass. Number two, yep. unfortunately, how many people are being laid off? Are putting being put out of work, being furloughed, being all of this unemployment is going to be at an all time high. You're giving people the opportunity to be able to get to work immediately. And if you've worked in a restaurant, who knows the restaurant business better than you? You understand from the inside out what's going on. If you can't do this, nobody can. So that that's my point. So Carmine, when the fuck are you going to start? Let's go, man. What are you doing? Well, first off, <clears throat> I'm kind of glad you guys stopped talking about pizza. I live in goddamn Florida. There's no good pizza here. So uh, oh, I'm glad we stopped talking about pizza. I used to eat it every day when I lived in New York. So hey, you're the one that moved down there. Ah, God, tell me good about it. Good for you. Um, here's the thing. Uh, one quick question. What, I, as you're talking about this and probably happens to everyone, you, my mind is going crazy. Cause you know, as, as Mark said, and as Brian, you know, we, we do have deep Rolodexes. We talk to a lot of business owners all the time. Plus, you know, we know people personally. First off, what I love about what this does and, and tell me if I'm wrong, Chris, is I go in to buy a slice of pizza. Now I'm talking about pizza and there's a eight or $10 minimum little sign on the desk. It eliminates that. Yeah. So, Carbine, you're hitting it on the nose. Uh, I'm going to discuss sales tactics prior to COVID, right? Because I hate to say it, but this just changed the entire dynamic. So, yes, prior to COVID, the sales campaign, which is incredibly successful, was things like this. Hey, business owner, aren't you tired of your stupid minimum sign? And why do you have a minimum sign? It's because it doesn't even make financial sense to accept a sale that's less than 10 or $20, because if it's a certain debit card, you can actually lose money wow. by accepting that payment. So that was one thing. Or how about this one, the whole good old fashioned, well, if you don't like it, go to the ATM, right? Well, who's, excuse me, dumb enough to go to the ATM and pay three, you know, two fifty, three dollars in any major city to pull out money. And then bam, Bank of America says here, a 350 penalty because it's Chase, right? Great. So you just paid seven bucks uh, to go pull out 20 bucks. God bless you had the hundred dollar limit. The machine let you some people, let's face it. I've been the guy who didn't have, uh, uh, I had $10. Sometimes I would pay those fees on to withdraw $10. Uh, things like that. Plus let's face it. New York is getting hammered with minimum wage, right? Minimum wage increases. All right. I feel it in my call centers, New Jersey scheduled to go five years. We can go on and on the, the minimum wage increase. Um, Guys, we can continue. Minimum wage trickles down. Think about it. It's not just, oh, I have five waiters and waitresses or that's going to hurt me. It's the logistics, the trucking, 
your cost of goods now has gone up to offset minimum wage. So this was all, and we can go on and on and on. That's even without getting into the merchants themselves just constantly, and I'll use the terminology, getting robbed. Okay, their rates going up. Okay, they've been lied to. Their, their fees, if they're not keeping a close eye, why is it every 12, 15 months my rates go up? Okay, so all this energy was our prior campaign, gentlemen. Restaurants were already struggling. Over here in New York, it was on the news every day. Our, some of our favorite restaurants were closing prior to COVID. Now, I hate to say this. Throw COVID into this. Your business is closed. All right. Who cares about minimum wage problems? Who cares about cost of good problems? Who cares about your rent increases, your property tax? Now you have to survive. How do you survive? You have to save money every angle. Honestly, you need money to be given money. I'm not going to get into the PPP and all the fun stuff, right? How it's not going according to plan, but you need money in your pocket to survive. This program now, forget all that other stuff. Now just simply take that savings, which is 3% to 4% of your gross sales. So if you do 100 grand, you're gonna save three to $4,000 a month, okay? You need this now. I'm not even gonna send my representatives in there anymore to bring up all the past problems. It's a new huge problem. And that is, hey, do you wanna stay in business? You have to stay in business, right? You have to take care of your family. So now the sales campaign is, hey, Eliminate your fees. Take that money just to keep keep afloat. Mm. So, Chris, yeah. um, I've been so excited. I've been so excited listening and participating in this conversation. I've never told anybody how the fuck to get you. So it's swipe the number four free swipe for free dot com. When you get on swipe for free dot com, you click on become a partner. It's again. I'm gonna go over this real. I'm gonna talk real slow. No cost to anyone. You sign up for the training, you get started, and the minute you can nail down an account is the minute you get paid on a fucking monthly basis. Did I miss anything? If you're a merchant out there and you're like, hey, I've got a restaurant, I've got a car dealership, I've got a pizzeria, what the fuck do I do? I'm going to send you to Brian at postedsocial.com and he'll make sure that you get to the right people. What we're doing today is we want you guys to the army of people who want to make money to get their ass off the living room couch and start hustling like I did, like I do, like Chris did, like he does, like Brian did, does. And that's what we're saying. So it's swipe for the number four free dot com swipe for free dot com and click on become a partner. Chris, I have another question for you. And it's very important because the first thing that it comes out of the merchant's mouths, I mean, this is before COVID, but maybe it won't be, maybe it'll be the same shit, but you know what people do. The minute they hear something new, they're like, oh, 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 right? What do you say to the merchant that goes, oh, I can't add 40 cents to a $10 slices of pizza. Oh, I'm going to lose fucking customers. What do you think? What the hell, man? What, 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 what can you say to people uh, to, to uh, speak to that? Because that's the knee-jerk reaction of some restaurant owners or business owners. They're going to lose customers. Tell them the reality of that. Well, the simplicity is, is that, you know, uh, tons of surveys have showed, hey, what has a, a, a more negative impact on your, on your customer base? Raising your price, right? So say you've been going, I'll give you a good example of, of a diner. I heard an argument, you know, uh, six months back. What the hell are you raising, uh, you know, my bagel and my coffee, a dollar for the bagel and 50 cents for the coffee, right? Uh, so it's either you, you, you make the decision for your business. Do I want to raise my prices and piss off my loyal customer base? Or do I want to just be honest and have a sign that we provide that simply says, due to, and this is prior to COVID, due to the rise of minimum wage, due to the labor cost increases, due to the cost of goods, we have implemented a cash discount. If you choose or opt to pay with cash, you will receive the cash price in my business. If you choose to pay with credit or debit, there will be a 4% non-cash charge added. Guys, consumers understand. The gas station model, thank God, made it very easy for us early on. It's the same thinking. Now, gentlemen, let me ask you, how many of you have opted to pay with cash to save that uh, extra you know, percentage? I know I don't. I don't even have cash on me. I only keep cash for a coat check and valet parking. That's literally the only two reasons I have a dollar on me. 
Uh, so I tell the owner that now to even get deeper, I always get asked this question. I'll even ask myself this. Hey, I'm scared to lose business. Guys, I'm not going to do complicated math right now, but if you were to calculate the amount of customers, the one out of a hundred a day that might walk out, right? Think about that, that net profit you've lost versus the savings that you are getting on that 3% or more on your gross credit card processing sales. It will wipe its ass with that any day. I've done it with restaurants every day. I've so, done the math. So let me, let, me simpli let me try to simplify the math just so that if I understand what you're saying. So let's go back to the fucking pizza place. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Carmine, we keep talking pizza, but... <laughs> It's, it's, it's My deli guys are going to get easy, jealous. It's easy to understand. I'll send you pizza and bagels uh, in the FedEx. Don't worry. Um, so you, the pizza place, you give them 20, at the end of the year, you've saved them $20,000. Not unheard of with yeah. this program, right? So you go to the guy and you go, how much does a slice of pizza cost you? Oh, it cost me 50 cents. So you say, so do you think that you're going to lose 40 thousand customers or 40,000 slices. It's physically impossible to lose that much business versus the $20,000. So if you did lose one or two customers, it, it, it doesn't, it pales in comparison to the 20,000 that we're going to put directly back in your pocket. Did I get that right? You, you absolutely hit, you hit the nail on the, on the head. Um, pretty simple there's pretty much no way you can lose more, uh, more business than the savings from this program. It's mathematically impossible because think about it, in a restaurant environment, the net profit, if you're lucky, is 10%, right? So if you lose $1,000 worth of sales, you're losing 100. But if you process 100 grand and you're saving three grand, you lost three grand, you gained three grand minus 100. You still came on top 2,900. I do this math with restaurant owners all the time. It's impossible to not win in this program. Okay. So let, We're not even, so, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, so, so let's say I go to my, you go to your favorite Italian restaurant. Yeah. I've been going there for 30 years and the, we, guy, we springs, the guy springs the 4% on me and I get pissed off. Let's just say I'm the customer. I've been coming here for 30 years and you didn't tell me nothing and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I get loud. Right. All the owner has to do is come to the table and say, listen, this is, this is the policy, blah, 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 blah. Have a piece of cheesecake and a cup of coffee on me. Let me buy dessert tonight. But what is the fucking dessert cost? And now all of a sudden, you're back to getting into the, the, the coffers. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 if it's a decent-sized restaurant, $50,000. You gave one asshole a piece of cheesecake and a fucking coffee, and you're off to the fucking races. I mean, there is a thousand ways out from under this fucking thing. It doesn't, this is a, such a no brainer. Okay. And I'll say it again, swipe for free, the number four, swipe for free.com. Click on become a partner. Again, there's no cost. I don't want to hear, don't, don't send me a fucking email crying, crying like a bitch. Don't send me <laughs> an email. I need money, blah, blah, blah. And inventors, who we speak to, this is an invention podcast, and it's also an entrepreneurial podcast, which are both very important areas. If you're an inventor and you're inventing something and you're not getting the traction that you're expecting to get, which happens a lot of times, you can do this in the meantime. So cry to your mother. Don't cry to me. Don't send me a fucking email. I'm telling you ahead of time. Well, so, Mark, we get, we get how many people come to us with the invention ideas that I just need $3,500. I just need five grand to make this happen. You can make this in a month doing this fund, very quickly. Fund it yourself, bitch. Fund it yourself. Right. I don't want to hear it anymore. Like, like stop crying. crying. Just, I'm, I'm giving people an opportunity out there to find out about something they never would have figured out before. Um, there's one other, there's one other thing that I wanted Chris to bring up because this isn't even good enough. This is even fucking what I'm bringing isn't even fucking good enough, Carmine. Okay? But wait, there's, there's more. There's a hook. I don't want to say that because it makes it sound like a fucking hook. I know. It, it makes it sound like a, oh, for separate processing and handling. <laughs> Fuck you. The, what I'm trying to say is there's another hook to this at the end of the day. So Chris, I get out there. 
I start off with my relatives. I start off with my friends. I build a small book. I'm getting, I'm moving, I'm grooving. Now I nail a car dealership or I nail, I, I nail a whole bunch of stuff and I build up a hundred thousand dollars a month in business, in, in credit card processing, not the commission, credit card processing. I've got a hundred thousand dollars a month, which is not difficult by the way. It's a couple of businesses. What can I do with that hundred thousand dollars? And I hope everybody's sitting the fuck down. Yeah. So the really the greatest part about the business is that the residual is is an asset. All right. Uh, to compare it to real estate, it has a value. You can sell that residual at any time. My company is always ready and willing to purchase your residual at a twelve x multiple. So perfect math. You have a hundred grand, by the way, we'll never buy a hundred percent of your, of your uh, residualized income. We need to leave you with some money, right? We'll always purchase up to 50% times 12 X. So beautiful math, your hundred grand, we will purchase 50,000 times 12. You're going to get paid a nice 600 grand check, 1099, go buy your house, buy a car, do whatever you got to do. Okay. We are always and willing to purchase your residual at a 12 X divisible. All right. So it's it's a an asset. It's six hundred thousand dollars, Carmine. A check for six hundred thousand. If you're a half an asshole, you got to be able to build a hundred thousand dollars a month. You Even got I to. can do that. You got to, Carmine. You could probably do a little more because you're smarter <laughs> than the average bear. But even if you're, I mean, think about that. An a, a, an average restaurant does a hundred thousand dollars a month. An average restaurant, right? you can turn around and sell it back to Chris and his company for 600 grand. It sounds too good to be true. And that's why I said to Brian, Brian, do me a favor, get the fuck out of here with this. I swear, Brian, didn't I say that? Oh, and, and I mean, you know, thankfully, and thank you to Chris, you know, in, in the next probably five, maybe six months, this is going to turn out to be our most profitable area of business. And we've only been doing it for, seven, eight months, you know, and Mark's have, I mean, Mark, thousands, thousands and thousands of deals you've done. This one's going to be, be the most profitable. That's pretty powerful stuff. And you know, not, of course, not everybody has a Mark Portney Rolodex. So for us, it made so much sense because we knew we could go to a thousand people right off the bat. We haven't made a cold call in eight months and we're probably two years away from having to dig out of the bottom of the Rolodex just yet. But Chris, since not everybody has that, what are the kind of types of people that you see are really successful with this? You know, if people are saying, hey, this sounds like a great idea, but is it really for me? You know, who, who, what are the buckets of people that this kind of fits? Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to call it, uh, we, we market this on our, on our website. You know, I look at three types of individuals, right? Uh, I'm going to start with the no brainer one. Okay. You, you own a business already that deals with merchants right? Uh, a very big uh, representative of ours sells medical insurance uh, to businesses. So it's a no brainer to recall your existing clients that you have a strong relationship with to offer credit card processing. Okay. No fee credit card processing. So if you do business with merchants already, I'll use a funny example of another very successful gentleman. He has a boar said ham, uh, boar said uh, cold cut route. And all he does is he's been doing it for 25 years. He goes back to the delis and the grocery and he says, hey, I can eliminate your credit card processing fees. Um, another great example, my biggest partnership right now is ATM vendors, the guys that place ATM to, uh, machines. They used to hate me because I literally almost put them out of business because you don't need the 10 or $20 minimum sign anymore, right? Uh, but they ended up, we teamed up. Biggest market for me is ATM. So if you're already dealing with merchants and you have a strong relationship with them, it's a no-brainer to do this as either an additional income source or sometimes it becomes your greater income source than what you're already doing. Now, those are those individuals that are lucky, right? They have relationships, things like that. My, my other pool of people, right? I'll use my brother for an example, right? Nice and simple. Hey, my brother, I'm not going to use his name. You, you know, I want you to pay for your car, right? You want to pay for your car. Okay, a nice car. And what do you do? It's as simple as going to your local businesses, right? All your friends, your family, anybody that you know and say, hey, I can eliminate your credit card processing fees and you sim simply sign up those people in your circle or that 
store that you've been shopping in for 10 years. And then guess what? Maybe it's not a career change. It won't make you a millionaire. But guess what? You'll make $750 a month. You'll make $1,200. You'll, you'll pay for your cell phone, your car insurance, your car payment, your rent. So those are those individuals. Because keep in mind, it is a residualized income for the lifetime of that account. As long as that account is active with Swipe for Free, you get paid. So that's the simplest. I tell everybody, I need to see everybody make a grand a month. Okay, if you're not making a grand a month, you didn't knock on 10 doors. Mm. Okay, everybody can knock on 10. Here comes the final one. Um, this is the one where I really, I, I want to help. And I want, you know, to give people the ability to make a living. Mark hit it before, you've lost your job. You're one of, I think, six to 10 million people. You're in the hospitality industry. Obviously, restaurant world, things like that. You, you need to do a career change, right? All you have to do, you start out, you go back to your old restaurant. You go back to the people you dealt with in, in, your, in the hotel industry. You go back to these individuals, you pitch the product. Okay, you pitch swipe for free, you sign those people up. You bust your ass. Guys, I did everything. I built everything that I have on borrowed money and sweat. Okay, I, don't, I didn't come from anything. It was all borrowed and sweat. If you're willing to sweat, invest sweat equity, bust your ass. You knock on doors. We, we give you a full kit of marketing materials. Okay. We're really good at this. We have broke 22,000 merchants on this program. We've learned, we give you every angle there is to, again, before COVID. COVID is just say, I want to help you stay in business. Okay. But we still give you the marketing kits, whatever you need. We educate you and you just bust your ass. You knock on doors. We tell you the specific business types. Guys, no brainer. Tow truck company. Before COVID, you break down. You're on the side of the highway. The guy pulls out a wireless terminal, right? On, it looks like a cell phone and says, hey, you know, if you pay uh, credit or debit, it's 4% more. You're going to tell the guy, I love you. Thank you so much. Really? Because I, I don't have 300 bucks on me. So you just, we teach you the specific business types that are no brainers, even though everything is a no brainer now. And you can go and you make this a career. Besides residuals, gentlemen, which is obviously the beauty, because remember, what is a residual? The dream is you work two, three, four, five years, and then you sit on a beach somewhere, or you move to Florida like you, Carmine, right? You get a tan all year round. And then you just take these service phone calls, and you use my customer support, and you get paid. You don't work for the man. You make your own hours. You hustle as hard or as not as hard as you want. You are your own boss. If you want to work 10 hours that day, great. If you want to work an hour, great. Three buckets. Car payment or multi-millions. It's completely up to you, the dedication level you want to give to this program. It's kind of like, I always use this example, New York City example. I'm a waiter or waitress, but I'm an actor or actress. So guess what? I got to pay my bills, so I'm going to be a waiter or waitress, but I'm going to pursue my passion as an actor or actress. We can be the greatest side hustle in the world for anybody. Spend an hour, call your friends, relatives, cousins, buddies, pals. That's how you get started in this business. Yeah. Pretty the, uh, the other important part is that it's in all 50 states. So anybody that's listening anywhere in this great country of ours can do this. So whether they're in Michigan, California, anywhere, anywhere, there's businesses in every single one of, of these states. And, and, there, and there's nothing seems to be out of bounds. Nothing seems to be out of bounds. So if they, collect, if they accept credit cards, they're in play. Isn't that right, Chris? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I enjoy doing a positive service for businesses, right? I used to be the bad guy when, when we were doing regular credit card processing. I was another utility, right? Credit card processing is the greatest utility a merchant has other than rent, let's face it. So the fact is that it's a win-win, right? I get to go into your business. I get to eliminate your fees. So guess what? You like me now. I'm not a bill. I'm not a headache. You don't have to wake up and check me every day to make sure I didn't rob you. Now you wake up, you realize, hey, I batched $1,000 plus the 40, 1,040, the 4%, but I received the 1,000. I didn't get 970. So not, you like me, you're going to send me referrals. You're not going to curse out my customer support teams. You know, attrition, which in our industry language means you're canceled accounts. We don't get canceled accounts. People, why would you cancel when there's no fees? 
okay? Credit card terminals are like cockroaches. They don't die. They're like your cable boxes. They survive everything except lightning strikes. Pretty simple. So, All so right? Let me, so let me, so a lot of these credit card companies, they charge you for the machines and all this other stuff. What, what does Swipe for Free do? How, how, do, how does the person that's calling on the account, um, is the machine included? Can you give the vendor a machine? How does that work? Yes. So both angles. As a merchant, you do receive uh, free equipment. You know, the ability to a uh, terminal level, a uh, basic terminal. Obviously, if you want to go and you want one of these gorgeous mi uh, micro POS systems because you have 60 tables, there's going to be fees involved. But um, your typical business will receive a, a free terminal. Um, also, our agents, whoever would love to give us an opportunity to work with you, um, we, we do provide equipment. So um, we always give the, uh, we basically right fit the merchant for whatever their processing needs are, whether it be, uh, you know, as complicated as uh, 60 POS systems uh, because you're an arena somewhere, you know, or as simple as a, a little swiper, like those crappy square things. Ours are way better in EMV compatible and uh, Bluetooth. So we right fit the client. We don't give the client crap they don't need. We understand their business's needs and wants. Great. Oh, so awesome. swipeforfree.com and that's swipe the number four free swipeforfree.com. Click on become a partner. Brian's, uh, if you're, if you're a merchant and you want to get swipe for free and not be a sales, uh, an ISO as uh, Chris puts it, independent sales organization, then you go to postedsocial.com. Brian will take it from there. Um, and he's uh, posted social.com for some uh, for some social media and, and, and marketing. And Carmine is uh, inventorslaunchpad.com for amazing um, amazing prototypes and and uh, what else? Pizza and pizza. Pizza. <laughs> if you need if you need a pie, he's got a special two slices and a coke, six bucks. Um, but he don't take cash. And, um, no and that's, uh, that's it. I mean, Chris, I, I can't thank you enough, man. This, this, nobody out there after this should have, have a fucking excuse not to get out there, hustle, make a living if they want to make a living or really crush it and be rich like you. Um, I mean, that, that, listen, it's, it's a tough guy. It's a tough gig, but somebody has got to do it. Right. So, um, your helicopter will be oh. here in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, right it's, it's awesome. But uh, listen, Chris, uh, we really appreciate you coming on today. I would love to deep digger, deep, deeper into the actual processes of signing somebody up, what they do, what they need to do, how they do it, like what the pitches are. But what's cool is that I love how you described just a normal guy wants to maybe have a side hustle. I don't think people realize how many contacts from people that they really know. You know? Yes, exactly. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Look at your phone right now. You know, go through your phone book. Uh, you know, I hate, I, the old-fashioned hustle with life insurance, right? How do you start? Mark always says it. You start with your friends. You push your, you know, you push your relatives into it. Guys, if you know anybody, and again, I grew up with no, no relatives owning a business, all right? Uh, we were all, everybody was lucky to be nine to five. Let's put it like that. But I did know the, I knew original pizza that I went to every day. You know, I knew the deli. I knew everybody, listen, put on a nice shirt, put on some pants, do the training, grab the marketing, get confident in the product. Okay. And just talk to your local business owners. I'm telling you now, okay. Out of every five that you talk to, you're going to get the attention of one. The closing ratios right now for my teams is like 20%, okay? That's all you have to do. The hard part, okay, is the sale, signing the agreement. The really hard part is what happened. The magic happens on the back end, right? The technology. How do we give them the total sale amount? How do we take out the 4%? How do we give them a clean deposit? We do all that for you. We need you to just talk and be confident and sell the product to merchants and business yeah. owners. The rest and we come, and come on, he he trains you. Yeah, he, you amazing. could sign up for a fucking train. He'll train you until you're so confident to go out there. But how much training do you need to go to your fucking brother and tell him, hey, listen, <laughs> uh, listen, asshole, uh, you, I'm going to save you some credit card fees. That's how you talk to your brother, right? At least yeah, that's how pretty I talk much. to mine. Oh, you but, tell him you better do this. Right, you better do this. I'm going <laughs> to put you in the balls. That's tell mom. 
exactly. Nah, it, so, it's uh, awesome. Awesome yeah, stuff. So no, wanna, that's why. I, I definitely, um, I'm so excited about this opportunity, uh, Carmine. I'd love to have Chris back. I really want to have him back. Yeah. Well, I think so. And next session, if, you know, we bring Chris back on, we dig into it deeper, get those, you know, those little pieces that people might have questions. Chris probably has heard every question. So we can go through some of those real ones that people, because, you know, people are negative. They're always looking for a reason not to do something. And you probably eat that alive because when you're not making it up, when it's a real, you know, business, when it's really going to help, you just got to tell them. And that's what's so great about what this sounds like. Obviously, if Mark and Brian are involved, it really shows me that it's something serious. But you know, you know what they call a person that finds fault in everything? An asshole. <laughs> Because couldn't have said I, 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 don't, I, don't have, I don't have patience for that. Okay, I'm asshole adverse. And if you look at something and you got a problem with everything, here I'm laying it out on a fucking silver platter, and you're gonna find problem with it. Do me a favor, go fuck yourself. That's yeah. the end of it. No, you know, no doubt. No so, doubt about it. All right. Well, good. We're gonna close up the show. Like I said, we'll bring Chris back on. We'll go over some stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's more questions. And uh, we thank everybody for listening today. Please go on out to Google Play or iTunes. Leave us a rating, a review. Get in touch with Brian Scanlon. Get in touch with Chris. Swipeforfree.com. Brian Scanlon, post, post it social. Um, there's a lot of other ways that Brian's on, but mostly on social media. Obviously, uh, you won't see Mark around but too much, but uh, he won't get back to you either way. Uh, get in touch <laughs> with me, Carmine Dinesco, Inventors Launchpad. We'd love to hear from you. We thank you for listening. We'll catch you thank next you time so much, on... Guys. Reality Thank is, you. you all take care. Thank, Thank Thanks, you guys.